What is good, everybody? This is Tatro. Today, we're going to be talking all about slicing samples in Ableton Live. Like if you've ever wanted to slice up a drum loop or maybe some chords. Or if you want to have some fun chopping up a vocal sample. This is actually incredibly easy to do in Ableton Live and in a previous chapter of the Ableton Live for Beginners series, which this is a part of, many people ask me to go deeper on sampling. So here's another aspect of sampling in Ableton Live for you. If you're not super familiar with Ableton Live, we've got a whole bunch of episodes prior to this that this episode is building on top of. So I definitely recommend you watch the series from the beginning if you're struggling to learn Ableton Live. If not, let's just get right into things with the slicing of the samples. And today's episode is going to be brought to you by DistroKid, and I'll tell you about them later. All right, so I've got Ableton Live open, and the only thing you need to worry about is having an empty MIDI track. You can ignore everything else I have on my screen. Now, when you do have an empty MIDI track and it says drop instrument here, you can also drop a sample there. Let's start by chopping a drum sample. You can get a drum loop from anywhere. I got mine from Splice. Drop it right in here and it automatically puts it into a simpler instrument. Now, we talked about simpler last time in terms of making like a one shot instrument, but this time let's use a different mode. Let's use the slice mode. When we enter in the slice mode, you're gonna see a bunch of blue lines here where it's going to try to slice it for you. But if you notice, these lines probably seem a little bit irregular. So if I start playing, it's not as smooth as when I demoed it earlier. That is because we're in a specific slice mode. We are slicing by transients which could be useful. We'll talk about that later. Transients is essentially the start of the sound. So that's what it's looking for, the start of every new sound. And you can see that here. Every time there's a new transient, it places a marker and it places a slice. Now, when in transient mode, we can turn down the sensitivity. So if you notice, as I turn that down, some of those blue markers go away and we actually get closer to what we essentially want. But it's not exactly right, and there's actually an easier way to do this. First of all, if our project is set to the correct tempo, the tempo we want our song to be at, we should warp the sample. So even though the sample was at 140 beats per minute, and our project is at 170, it's now going to sync it in time with the project to be at 170. And now let's change the slicing mode, because this will be an easier way to get to where we want to go. Let's use beat slicing mode. And this is going to give us the power to slice by beat divisions. And since we're warped and in time with the project, those will correspond nicely to specific hits of the drum pattern. You can change this by changing the division. We're set to quarter notes right now. You could be even more refined and go to eighth notes. But as you can see, there's kind of just... Maybe you would want these individual little percussion hits, but I don't necessarily think we need them. We could go to buy half notes. It's all dependent on your style and what you're actually trying to achieve. If we set this to quarter notes, we're gonna get an easily recognizable separation of instruments. We've essentially taken this drum loop and turned it into a drum kit we can use. But part of what makes slicing like this cool is you get all the little extra stuff, like all those little percussion hits at the end of a snare or a kick. Make it that much cooler. When the sample is in the simpler like this, we have the ability to control certain things, like to be able to transpose it. You're transposing the entire sample. We can also add fades. Doesn't make a lot of sense for drums, but I'll talk about how those are useful later. We've got a built-in filter as well. And then under controls, you've got a few things. Let's look at the pitch envelope for a second, because I think this could actually be fun to play with on this sample. Pitch envelope gives us the ability to change the pitch over time. So let's actually change the amount. and Let's bring that down a few semitones. We're not hearing much of a change yet because Envelope isn't working yet. I'll bring the sustain up. 
So what you're hearing is the initial hit of the sound and then it coming down in pitch. Let's bring the amount down. Let's extend the release time a bit. So now we're kind of getting this cool pitch effect. If I turn that off, we're just hearing the normal pitch of the sample. If I turn the pitch envelope on, we're getting a kind of cool effect. Now, if you combine that, it could make for a fun groovy pattern. So I just thought that was interesting. Play around with the pitch envelope and you can change the pitch over time. Now notice these are drum one shots. They're super short, which means the attack time for this envelope can't be so long. It can't take 16 seconds to change or you're not going to hear the change because this sample is literally probably less than a second. Next, let's take a normal guitar loop and slice that as well. Command shift T. Let's make a new MIDI track. Take that sample, drag it right in. You can do this manually, by the way. I could go over to the browser, find simpler, drop simpler in there and then drop the chords in there. But you can skip that step just by dropping in the sample onto a MIDI track. Again, we're defaulting into classic mode. Let's switch to slice mode. It is again defaulting us to transient, which is not gonna be really helpful at all for these chords. We can see the chords. We can see where each one starts. You might have some creative idea to use that for, but right now we don't need it. So I'm going to default back to chopping it by beat. I'm going to warp the sample once again. Let's do this by beat. Quarter notes, you can see there's so many slices in each chord. If we can visually see that there are chords every bar, then let's just change that to one bar. Now we have a clean slice for every bar. However, you might notice if you look really closely, especially at this one, the sample that we have, the chords are not perfectly on the beat. They're a little more humanized. That's fine. And we can adjust the slices by hovering over this little blue line so that we get that little arrow and just moving it over. All right, now I'm not hearing too much clicking. on that one. You hear at the beginning of this chord, we're getting a little bit of a click. That usually happens when the sample is starting not at zero decibels. It's like cutting right into some audio. Now we could be finicky here with the start point and try to find a place where it doesn't click. But if you have a lot of samples and there's a lot of clicking going on, it's not something you really want to deal with like that. A simpler way to deal with that is by using the fades, fade in and out. If we fade in just by six milliseconds or something, maybe even less, we're not going to get any clicking. And if we want to be sure that there's not going to be a click on the other side, because this might cut out at an inopportune time, we can do a few milliseconds of fade out. No clicking in or out. It's just a really safe way to make sure there's no click sounds. Again, when we transpose, we can transpose the entire thing. And since we're warped, it's staying in time. I'm going to fix this one right here because you notice how the next chord is really starting there. Perfect. Another timing thing here, if you wanted to stretch things out or shrink them, you can easily do that by using the divide by two or the multiply by two. So we can double the length here. Of course, when we're stretching audio, we're going to start to hear some stretching from the algorithm of the warping. Now, different warp techniques will have different effects. Like for instance, if I use the beats warp mode on this, it's not going to sound that great hear all that stuttering. Maybe you have a specific lo-fi sound you're going for, but not what I'm going for here. Complex usually works pretty well. Tones for certain things, but not this. I would say complex 
it's going to give us the best effect. But no matter what, if you're stretching audio, you're going to get some type of artifacts unless it's recorded at such a high sample rate. If I half the tempo, we're going to get really short sounds. So I usually use it most of the time if I need to elongate a sound. And then I'll end up using some type of filtering, which could maybe help mask some of the artifacts caused by this stretching, but not always. It's usually pretty hard to hide. Okay, there's actually a way that we can place our own markers in here and create our own slices. And I want to show you how to create those cool vocal slices as well. Do I like a little do you guys? I'm going to do that after I tell you about DistroKid, the sponsor of today's video. DistroKid is how I get all my music on Spotify, Apple Music, TikTok, Instagram, all of the above. And I've been using their service since well before they ever became a sponsor of their channel. The reason being that their motto, be prolific, means that you don't have to pay every time you want to release some music. You pay one annual fee and you can release as much music as you want throughout the year. I even have a label account so I can release music under different names. Most of you probably don't need that, but I think it's a cool option. Currently about to finish my new album, Ghost Wave, which I'll be distributing with DistroKid, of course. And a big part of promoting that will be using the pre-save links. Now for my last album, Music for Ghosts, I used the pre-save link and I actually captured the emails of all of those who pre-saved and I used that to run a giveaway. That made it actually be my most successful pre-save campaign of any release that I've ever done. And I was able to send out a cool prize to one lucky pre-saver. I even still use the hyper follow link for my album Music for Ghosts as just a hub for that release because it's got the Spotify link, it even has the Bandcamp link, it has a link to the merch, to the website, all of the above, and that's something that DistroKid provides beyond just distribution. I think that's what's cool about DistroKid, they've got a lot of things beyond just uploading your music. They've got ways to promote your music too. So if you're making music and you're putting it out there to the world, Here's 7% off. The link is in the description. Sign up for DistroKid. You get a discount on your first year. Like I said, they've been my distributor for years since I ever even talked to anybody from there. Uh, and I don't think I'll change anytime soon. So sign up for DistroKid. The link is in the description. 7% off your first year. That's going to be it. Let's go back into slicing some samples. All right. Chopping a vocal sample is one of the most fun things I like to do in Ableton Live. Let's command shift T, which adds a new MIDI track. Let's grab a vocal hook. I have this one here. I grabbed all these samples from Splice, but grab your samples from wherever you want to grab them. All right, again, let's go into Slice mode because that's what it's all about today. Now, with a vocal, something that's not so easily rhythmically chopped, like the drum kit was rhythmically chopped, the guitar chords, again, they were landing on one bar. Vocal is a little bit more dynamic. You might want to catch certain words and certain phrases. So slicing by transient might not be a bad place to start. Let's check. This is something that might happen often in transient mode. That first slice is basically nothing. Why? Because it's put a slice between the start of the sample and where the sample actually starts. So usually if we can just move that marker over to the start, we'll be clean. Do I like little so it's not quite chopping by the word. Do I like little... You can get finicky with it. You can adjust the sensitivity. Do Starting by slicing by beat is a good place to start. Do I like a little guy? But it might not be perfect. There is a manual mode as well, in which you can double click and add your own slices, your own little slice markers. So there I've just added two. I have the start, like, 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 that one, little guy. and that's going to play the rest of the sample play, play. until I add another slice. Like so you can go in there and do your own slicing, no problem. My thought is why go into manual mode if you could have a starting point of either transients or beat mode, because even if it does insert its own warp markers, you can double click on the warp markers that Ableton has chosen, or not warp markers, the slice markers, and you can get rid of them. So you might as well start somewhere with the computer doing a little work for you. Do I like now again, we're gonna run into the same issue with a little bit of that clicking sound. Do I like we can change the endpoint. But for an instrument like this, an instrument like vocals, where we're going to be slicing in and out of different sounds, a little bit of fade in and a little bit of fade out, it's not really going to affect the way the like guy. sample sounds, but is going to greatly help us avoid any slices down the road that might lead to clicking. Do I like a guy. I do, I do, I do. 
Of course, do a little filtering, do a little pitching. Let's pitch this one up. And here's where getting rid of some markers might be helpful as well. This word games gets split up into two slices. Let's get rid of that. And we have just the word games. And we can, of course, adjust the starting point. And we can get rid of some slices. That's really going to come in handy when you have a MIDI controller, like I have this one here that has 16 pads. I don't want to waste precious pad space on a sample that I'm not using. So you can make these slices your own. Transpose it down a bunch, throw a little filter on there, stretch out the sample. Let's add some reverb. Add a little four to the floor bass and you're good to go. Ready for your EDM hook at any moment. Hello, this is editing Tatro and I omitted like a really important function of the simpler here when it comes to slicing like this and that's the trigger and the gate function. I never actually use it in this video, but trigger essentially means that when I press a pad, the full length of that slice will play. If you switch to gate mode, holding down the pad is the way to play the full duration of the actual sample. But if you do a short hit, it will only play the sample for as long as you're hitting the button. I just skipped that because I didn't actually use it in this video, but that's important. Back to the video. There's one last thing. You know what's really annoying about being in this mode, especially when we did it for, let's say the drums, right? Let's, let's jump back to the drum sample. What's convenient about a drum rack is that I can change each individual slice of a drum rack. I can make the kick slightly lower tempo without affecting the snare. When I'm here in this rack, if I change the pitch, everything is getting changed. Or let's say I want to crop in on a specific instrument, add an effect only to the snare. We can't do that when we're in slicing mode, but there's a really easy way to go from this sliced simpler to a drum rack once we're happy with how it sounds. Right click on the sample and click slice to new drum rack. It's that simple. Now, you might have seen another option there. Let me hit command Z. There is slice to new MIDI track and slice to drum rack. Watch what happens if I slice to new MIDI track. Slicing to new MIDI track will create a MIDI clip, which we can delete, and it makes a track in addition to our already sliced simpler. So it preserves the original simpler, but gives us a drum rack. So I guess that's up to you and your preference if you want to preserve this original simpler. If you don't care, you can just slice to new drum rack. Either way, you're getting a drum rack. Look at that. All the slices that we did in simpler now are here in a drum rack that we should recognize. And that also means that each individual sample can be edited, meaning we can pitch this down, this kick, and it doesn't affect the snare. We can add a reverb to the snare specifically, directly to that slice, and none of the other instruments have that reverb on it. That also gives us the option to, if we have other slices with other kicks and other snares, we got a snare with reverb. We got a snare with no reverb. We got a down pitched kick. We have a at pitch kick. Oh, and look at that. We messed up that slice. So this is just a classic sample chopping workflow in Ableton Live MPC users may be very familiar with this type of workflow, but you can see that it's very easy to achieve with Ableton Live. And there's a lot of possibilities even beyond what we talked about today. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Like I said, this is part of a much longer Ableton Live for Beginners series, which I will link in the description down below. So you can watch the whole thing if you need to learn all about Ableton Live, like if you got lost anywhere. If you want to see future chapters of the series, please let me know what you'd like to hear me talk about in the comments. And thank you again to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. You can use the link in the description once you finish your awesome beats with some sliced samples. And you can get 7% off your first year with DistroKid by using the link in the description. Description. Get your music to Spotify, Apple Music, all that good stuff. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.